honored guests. Please welcome to the stage, CEO of Barry Callabout, Peter Bona. Thank you. Grazie. And good afternoon. Hey, I would like to extend a warm welcome here to everyone joining us today. Whether you are here in person, whether you are online, a very special welcome. And also a special welcome for this magnificent city, Venice. What a magical city. For centuries, this city had a rich tradition of craftsmanship, quality and design. And these features have inspired generations of explorers and makers all over the world. It's also a city that more recently, because of mass tourism, has been looking at ways to reinvent itself, to stay relevant into the future. My name is Peter Boom. And as CEO of the world's leading chocolate producer, Buddy Callabout, I'm excited to get with you today. Today we are sharing news, not just an innovation. But we think it's a real paradigm shift in the world of chocolate. A product that represents superb quality, an exciting reinvention, a whole new future for our industry. Our business is to bring joy and happiness into the lives of people every day, every second, somewhere around the world, with chocolate. And over the last 200 years of chocolate production, there have been numerous milestones in our industry. And in this time, these innovations have driven our industry forward each and every time. Not only that, but they have dramatically increased the quality of the chocolate we consume today. Today, we will reveal another that is more than just an innovation. Everyone at Body Callabout, all functions, have been involved. And we think it ushers in an entirely new era of chocolate happiness. It's a paradigm shift as we step into the next generation of chocolate. And that makes today a very special day. But first, let's take a moment to reflect back on these milestones in our industry. As long as there's chocolate, there will be happiness. So said the writer and filmmaker Wayne Gerard Trotman. We know chocolate happiness for over thousands of years, starting with drinking chocolate. Chocolate making, as we now know it, begins in the year 1828. This is the year that Dutch chemist Koenraad van Houten invents a special press which goes on to transform chocolate production, leading to a series of important innovations in the world of chocolate. In 1847, chocolate makers soon learned that they could make a solid form of the original dark chocolate. In other words, the first chocolate bar. In 1875, milk chocolate is born, cleverly adding condensed milk to dark chocolate to produce a smoother, velvety variety. To this day, milk chocolate is the most popular type of chocolate. In 1937, white chocolate is introduced. In 2017, a fourth type and completely new sensorial experience enters the market. Ruby chocolate, made from the ruby cocoa bean. Then, in 2019, a chocolate made from 100% pure cacao fruit captures our taste buds like never before. Making full use of the cacao fruit, it's the world's first upcycled chocolate. These are the breakthrough moments in almost two centuries of our industry. Progressive moments of knowledge development, milestones that had to be mastered to get to where we are today. So these five moments represent the evolution of taste sensation. 
They have laid the groundwork for what we are here to reveal today. In behind the scenes, we've also seen tremendous leaps in farming and production techniques. As a group, we are proud of developments we have initiated around sustainability, addressing complex questions like deforestation and farmer income. We want to make sustainable chocolate the norm. The chocolate we consume today is among the finest chocolate so far. As an industry, we have mastered it. Yet, for all of this and all the milestones we have just learned about, the recipe and the taste experience of chocolate over the years has more or less been the same. Until today. Over the last 150 years, people have changed. Behavior has changed. And chocolate consumers today are looking for something different. A chocolate that plays to our desire for purity of flavors and for simplicity. Of course, it's impossible to separate the growth of chocolate as a food and our industry from those very people, like you and me, who consume chocolate. To give us some more background on what changes and what it means, I would like to hand over now to Bas Smit. Thank you so much. Please welcome to the stage, Barry Calabout, Global Vice President of Marketing, Bas Smit. Thank you, Peter. Wow, hello. Indeed, consumer attitudes to life change and have been changing. We see this across generations, across demographics, and places across the world, which is not that surprising, since all of us are hyper-interconnected, while crises quite often turn out to be accelerators for what has been in motion already. So, what attitudes to life can we observe? By the way, it doesn't mean that I'm living just one lifestyle. Some months a year, some days a week, or some phases in life, I might stick to one more than the other. And it's not just me, it's all of us. Sometimes we want to celebrate life, we want to let it go, we want to take full joy of life, have pleasure and indulge. Other moments, we live more consciously, we are concerned, and we want to, or have to, nurture our nature. More recently, we noticed more and more consumers turning into a soft health approach to life. People who want to live in harmony with their mind, body and planet. People living a symbiotic life. Being a kind of sweet spot between living consciously and celebrating life. So, let's zoom in on this a bit. To live a symbiotic life means that I have the ability to make choices without compromising my well-being, the health of myself, the people around me, or the planet. Words popping in mind are about joy, harmony, and respect. In response to this, you see vertical forests rising, like in Milano, containing more than 900 trees. Families gardening to get close to nature, but as well to educate ourselves what it takes to produce good food. We see car brands making electric or hybrid driving more accessible, or mainstream brands like Levi's innovating so people can buy better and wear longer, and sometimes made from upcycled materials, all to stimulate a circular economy. And, in case we want to, we can enjoy full-course menus with very sophisticated flavored drinks without alcohol nowadays. The changing attitudes to life impact what we consume, what we buy, what we drink. Consumers reconsider what they put in their stomach. And while they are shopping, we don't want to disappoint them the moment they pass the confectionery aisle, the bakery counter, or the ice cream freezer. We want them to find their beloved chocolates and satisfy their cravings, to create chocolate happiness, but more mindful, fitting their symbiotic lifestyle. 
If we look more closely at the current chocolate aisle, what consumers can buy does not fully respond to what they prefer. For sure it's tasty, it's indulgent, it brings pleasure. But it's quite sweet too, and contains quite some ingredients. Well, what they want will always be about taste. It's always about pleasure. It's always about indulgence, and sometimes even intense indulgence. The chocolate they would like to put in their shopping basket, like more and more other products they buy, are about flavor, nature's flavor. They are simpler, they are healthier, and it's not a mystery how these products are made. To get to a next generation of chocolate, fitting the evolving consumer needs, we, Barry Callebaut, had to rethink how chocolate is made. Had to redesign the product itself and the critical steps that have been there for decades. Redesign the farming, fermentation and roasting. Redesign cocoa, cultivation and craft. Are you ready to geek out a little bit? It's time for Marcello to come on stage and talk a bit more about the design of the making of chocolate, the redesign of the making of chocolate, fundamental to what we will introduce to you today. Thank you. Marcello. And now, to talk about innovation in production techniques, please welcome Barry Callebaut, Head of Coco Science, Marcello Corno. Thank you, Vas. And good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> it's truly exciting to be here with all of you today. And uh, as a scientist at Barry Callebaut, it's my job to ensure that we get some critical steps right every time. As the humble cacao bean make its way from farm to our taste buds. There are over 400 different flavor notes in cacao, and they all need to be just right. So they play together as the wonderful, delicious symphony that we know and love called chocolate. And to get uh, from bean to chocolate bar is an exacting science. Uh, like the grapes that make uh, a fine wine, um, the taste of cocoa is determined, uh, yes, on the one hand uh, by genetics, and on the other hand by things like soil uh, and climate. Uh, but uh, around 40 to 50 percent of what we do after harvesting the beans uh, also has an important effect on chocolate quality. But not only that, <laughs> because each bean is different. And there are also subtle differences from one crop to the next, but even from one batch to the next. So the point here is there are a lot of variables that each impact on the quality of the F product. And if you are one of the largest producers in the world, as we are, that makes quality control challenging, <laughs> to say the least. So let me share some facts which may surprise you about the way we produce chocolate today. Things that we learn which make the best chocolate known to the human palate. We've learned that uh, um, already when farming cacao, we can make choices to grow and sell at beans for their flavor potential. Uh, what's more, um, uh, the sugar content of the pulp is also a good indication of the quality of the end product we can achieve. But then there's the way we ferment the beans. Through countless studies and research, uh, we now know that both the length of time and the temperature are critical if you want a consistently high quality result. Ah, don't forget, we also need the right level of sugar during fermentation. And finally, uh, the way we, we dry the beans. Believe it or not, uh, during this step, if we get it a little bit wrong, the chocolate becomes bitter and asses. But now, as you can imagine, at Barry Callebaut, we have been tinkering with these early stages of the production process for a long time to see what we can improve on. But it's all part of our mission to create the best chocolate in the world. But until now, these production steps have been difficult to manage. Most of them have been in the hands of farmers, and we have minimal quality control. You see, 
You have to be really close to the ground in the country of origin to influence these steps. And fortunately for us, we are, and we can have an influence. So the question for us is eternal. How can we make chocolate an even more joyful and delicious delight? How can we celebrate Nacho's flavor of cacao? So this is where our journey to the next generation of chocolate started a few years ago. Our starting point was a better understanding of our raw material. And through trials and fine-tuning, so we developed closer partnerships with our farmers. We trained them and we put in place certain protocols. Today, with the support of our Co Horizons program, farmers are delivering beans of an exceptional quality in a completely new and precise way. For example, we receive fresh cacao beans of a maximum eight-hour time span between harvest and delivery. But not only this, the beans have already been screened for their flavor potential. And through our coaching and training programs, farmers' crops are higher in quality, and the farms are more productive, which means more money in farmers' pocket at the end of the day. And with the entire chain working together in harmony like this, it's a win-win for everyone. Uh, but let's talk about a specific and very important initial step in the production process, fermentation. What we now have in place is a specific time to temperature curve to generate the flavors that you and I have come to love when we eat chocolate. And since early 2000, we have been optimizing the fermentation process. And with new insights, based on, upon, upon a lot of research, recently leading to a new fermentation protocol. Beans are fermenting their own pulp. We leave it completely up to nature, with no starter culture added. And we monitor everything from start to finish. And this is a process that has been fine-tuned to the level of the beans. Incredible, eh? And in this way, the unique character and natural flavor in each bean is perfectly awakened. But now, the step that I just described to you all happened before we even ship the beans for roasting. And that gives you some idea of how passionate we are about flavor and quality, right off the mark. And to talk about the all-important last steps on the way to chocolate happiness and the next generation chocolate, I'd like to introduce you, Gabby, from our R&D team. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage our final speaker, Head of Research and Development at Barry Calabout, Gabby Kopp. Thank you, Marcello, Peter, and Buzz. We have been on a journey through chocolate history and innovation today. We have heard about the state of play in a world of chocolate lovers and what we are doing at Barry Calibaut in our pursuit of taste superiority. Our work is a delicate balance. It's where nature meets craftsmanship meets innovation. And my role at Barry Calibaut focuses on flavor management and sensory research. So let's zoom in on that for a moment. My team and I, we manage flavor development throughout the total cocoa bean process, from the raw bean to the final chocolate product. We work together with universities to unlock the full flavor potential of cocoa and to master each process step to get the best results. And some of that exciting work has allowed us to launch a new product today. As Marcello touched upon earlier, the flavor development is very important in the fermentation process. It's crucial. What fermentation does is develop aroma precursors. Precursors which then get transformed into aroma com compounds during the roasting process. 
before fermentation, as some of you may know, I'm sure, the taste is really, it doesn't taste anything like chocolate, so the raw bean. And it's actually very bitter in taste. But fermenting and roasting changes everything. To get a new generation of chocolate, we ferment and roast the cocoa beans in a specific way, so that we get a consistently mild and balanced chocolate taste throughout the total eating experience. The cocoa mass attributes we want to have are mild cocoa, not roasted and bitter, not astringent, and no peak of sourness. And it's only when we get the cocoa mass right in these attributes that we can produce a great tasting chocolate that isn't too sweet, which we have done. Through research and testing, we have developed a specific gentle roasting protocol, which brings us the right flavor for what we are here to launch today. Balancing out the right temperature, time and moisture, this new roasting technique preserves already existing aroma compounds, like the floral notes or the nice fruity notes. It strips off acidic compounds and it avoids the development of any roasted and bitter notes. But on top of that, it also generates the new aroma compounds that we want to have in our new product. And this brings us now to our sensory research. Chocolate eating is very much a sensible experience. It's about taste, aroma, texture and mouthfeel. And it's an area where we have seen a lot of innovation. As you can imagine, in our line of work, we taste chocolate a lot. And we analyze taste. In a typical sensory session, you end up in an output which is a snapshot. Flavor is a picture in a moment. However, we all know that when we eat anything, the experience is a journey through different flavors and notes over time. And we wanted to track that because it's a more comprehensive picture. So we changed the way we measure the eating experience of chocolate from a static to a dynamic picture. We now get the taste profile over time, or in other words, we, instead of taking a picture, we make a video. Much more information and better insights how the product is perceived by the people that eat it. We can now measure those delicious fruity notes, the creaminess, the milky and honey notes over time as they unfold in the mouth. And this is important because this gave us further insights that helped us to rethink the way chocolate was made. So there you have it. A finely tuned farming, fermentation and roasting process where we measure how we perform to further optimize the chocolate flavor experience. What we have learned is set to change everything. And we are launching it here today. And with that, I'd like to hand back to Peter now. Thank you very much. So interesting. Thank you, Gabi. But also, thank you, Marcelo. And of course, thank you, boss. So, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> This is the moment, this is the moment we have been waiting for. As I mentioned earlier, for the last 150 years, the taste profile and the recipe 
for the majority of chocolate bars has barely changed. But the people who eat it every day, like you and me, have. What we are revealing to you today is arguably the culmination of almost two centuries of work in our industry. Driving the research, turning to the latest technology, working with, other, with our customers, we have turned it all into something irresistible. Honored guests, I now present to you the second generation of chocolate. Well, hopefully you see the size of this innovation. Welcome to the world of the second generation of chocolate. This chocolate will allow brands and artisans across the world to create a full range of second generation chocolate creations in dark and milk varieties. But we have said and seen a lot already today. I think there's only one thing left to do and let's join our chefs, so let's taste. I want to thank you so much for attending here today, and I look forward to meeting many of you to talk more about our exciting innovation. I have now everyone here present in Venice to join me for the tasting session.